I also wanted to run through some of these other cache basics uh, to make sure that the people understand all of these terms that we will use in, in, in most cache discussions. We've already talked about the L1 cache being split as instruction and data, right? So I said that if this is your core, right, it usually accesses, you know, L1, there's an L1 data cache, and there's also an L1 instruction cache, but then these go on to share the same L2 and the same L3 and so on, right? So uh, once you move past the L1, the caches are usually unified. I also talked about the fact that these hierarchies can be inclusive, exclusive, or non-inclusive. Okay, now let's talk about, you know, what is write allocate, what is write no allocate. So if my core issues a write, right, so and writes are done by doing a store instruction. So when I do a, do a write, and I ended up having a miss in my L1, but I find data in my L2. Okay, now the question before me is, do I bring this block into L1 or not? If I bring the block into L1, that's called a write allocate policy. If I don't bring the block into L1, that's called a write no allocate policy. Okay, so, you know, depending on the data access pattern, one of these two is going to perform better. Okay, so usually when I do a store, it means that I'm kind of done with that data, right? So the way programs behave is you bring in some data into registers, which are your scratch pad memory. You do various computations over there. When you're done with all of your computations, you then store the data back into memory, right? So a store usually means that this is the end of my temporal locality. I'm unlikely to use this data again. Okay, so that argues for using a write no allocate policy because, you know, if I'm done with this data, why should I bring it in into the L1? Okay, but there are also many other cases where you do a store. Okay, so for example, when I'm if I'm calling a function, then before I call that function, I have to put all my registers back into memory, right? So that's an example of a store. And that's an example where I am going to touch the data in the near future, right? As soon as that function finishes, I'm going to get back to accessing this data and, and working with it, right? So that's an example where a write allocate policy would do well because the store does not imply that your temporal locality has ended, okay? So depending on um, the kinds of programs that you run, you'll either use a write allocate or a write no allocate policy. And the write allocate policy ends up being the most popular. Then also on a write, you can do write back or write through. Okay, so in a write through policy, you know, let's assume that you're using an inclusive hierarchy where there's a copy of block A over here, here, and let's say over here. In a write through policy, when I do a write into A, I don't just update this copy over here, I also update the copy in L2, right? And I also go ahead and update the copy in L3. Okay, so this would be no, this this is known as a write through policy where every write basically you know propagates through the different levels of the hierarchy, and this ensures that you know all of these copies of 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 A are kept consistent. Okay, so later we'll talk about cache coherence, and so write through policy certainly simplifies your coherence policy, your your coherence mechanism. Okay, but when you do a write through policy like this, it increases the level of traffic between all of these many different levels. Okay, so to reduce the traffic, you could use what is called a write back policy, which says that when I do a write into this L1 copy, I don't update my L2 copy. So those two copies are going to differ in the value of A. Okay, and much later when A gets evicted out of cache, that's when you go in and update the copy in L2. Right, so this is known as a write back policy, and it reduces traffic because it, um, it aggregates multiple writes into the same block before finally, you know, making one final write into the L2 cache. Okay, but, you know, this also complicates your cache coherence policy or cache coherence protocol because now you have to keep track of these multiple different copies of A. Then a, a last couple of points is that, you know, you, these caches are dealing with both reads and writes. And usually reads get higher priority because, you know, uh, the read is something that um, the processor needs to move on with subsequent computations. Whereas a write, uh, you know, there's really no instruction waiting for the result of a write. Okay, so reads always get higher priority, and the write usually get placed, writes usually get placed in a write buffer so that the reads can move ahead of them. Okay, but once this write buffer gets full, you know, those have to be drained at some point. And so at that point, the writes will get higher priority than the reads. I should also mention that, you know, if you look at our pipeline, we said that given an address, I'm going to look up my cache, and my cache has two elements. It has the data array, and it has the tag array. And so in parallel, I'm going to look up my tags and my data. Uh, 
okay hopefully one of the tags is going to yield a cache hit and accordingly you know that data element gets sent back to the CPU okay so the way I described it the tag access and the data access happens in parallel okay and you know this will improve your access time and this is what is usually done for the L1 because for the L1 you want to make sure that the data lookup happens say within a cycle when you move to the L2 and L3 you know these caches are larger they are they're also you know much more set associative and so if you were to do parallel tag and data access you would end up reading a whole bunch of ways from the data array and then ultimately only one of them is going to be useful right so that leads to a huge loss in energy consumption so instead what is done is you first look up the tags and you determine that say you know way 3 has my data so at that point you then look up your data array and you only read out way 3 and then send it back to the CPU so this reduces your, your energy consumption but it increases your access time because you're sequentially looking up the tags and then the data elements okay but you know once you get to the L2 or L3 you're not as concerned about access time you're more concerned about you know making sure that the hit rate is high and you're also concerned about reducing energy consumption because these structures are so large and so that's why you know this the serial tag data policy is employed for L2, L3 and beyond okay so in, in the next video I'll start discussing various cache innovations